Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It is um, Wednesday the 3rd of June today. I had to check then. The time is going so fast. And uh, this is the uh, Wednesday edition of my upload uh, broadcast. The next one, just to remind you, will be on um, Friday the uh, 5th of June. So I don't do one every day. I do one alternate, alternate days. And it's the uh, tune of the day to keep the COVID-19 away. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're already a member of my community, the over a thousand subscribers now, 1,019 and rising, uh, then don't forget to press the little bell and uh, so you know the next time I'm broadcasting. And also don't forget to press the like button, the thumbs up, so and also pass on to any other of your social media and uh, friends if they, you think this is a good video for them to watch as well got quite a uh, lot of things to chat to you about today. Uh, the first thing, of course, is I start off with is the press. Um, we've had the briefing from the government today. And uh, as of yesterday, um, just let me get my bit of paper from yesterday. Right, yesterday, the total number of deaths for the day was um, 111 people. And the total deaths overall was 39,045. Um, there had been 1,570 positive tests for COVID-19 and um, uh, the hospital, in pe those people with COVID in hospital was around 7,000 uh, with COVID-19. So today, being the 3rd of June, the total number of deaths since yesterday is 359 and the total deaths overall from all services is 39,728. Um, so, and the interesting thing is that um, there's quite a bit of controversy going on now about the testing system, and it's recommend reckon reckon that between 25 and 30 percent of all tests give a, pol uh, a false positive, which is a bit concerning, really. 7,000 people are in hospital. That's down 16 percent since yesterday, um, and uh, the test and trace system is now up and running, the government say, though in Parliament today, Keir Starmer for the Labour Party was questioning that because um, he claims that in fact he's been told by various organisations that in fact it's not happening as quickly as they expected, in fact it's not up and running, though Boris Johnson disputes that. Um, so, uh, and the number of positive cases today is 1,871, um, and it could be as high as 8,000. The, uh, the Office of uh, National Statistics is reckoning. So all these numbers I give you need to be taken with a bit of a pinch of salt. Um, there's been quite a lot of um, discussion in the press also today from the National Care Association. Nadra, my friend Nadra Arve was on the television just a few minutes ago because it's reckoned that something like um, 20,000 20, uh, older people were discharged from hospital with COVID-19 and were tested before they were discharged into the community, basically. So it was a perfect storm for care homes to be the breeding ground of COVID-19. And there's going to be, there were some really sad cases there uh, where relatives have been asking the hospital to test their loved ones before being discharged. And the hospital was saying that the uh, advice they were given by Public Health England was that they couldn't do that. And so some homes were saying they weren't able to take people. Others were forced to take one because obviously their funding was affected. And uh, certainly the National Care, so National, uh, National Care Forum were advising uh, providers not to take uh, uh, patients back into care homes or new admissions. And that's uh, the thing that the, all the, the um, sector has been sticking to for most of the time. So, uh, interesting, just a little segue now into the YouTube channel of the day. Um, I often catch up on YouTube with BBC Click. There's lots of technology stuff there that I really like to listen to. But so something that was a very, very good report today was about Taiwan. Now, Taiwan's interesting because it's not far from China. <clears throat> in fact, China has designs on Taiwan, though it's an independent state and has its own government um, as a democracy. But um, Taiwan had learned from the Tsar's um, epidemic some time before. And so when they had a hint that COVID-19 was coming, they immediately locked down and made sure they tested in everybody entering through the airport uh, for temperatures and also issued a dictate that everybody had to wear face masks. In fact, they stepped up their production of face masks 
and due to the action that they've taken they only had seven cases yesterday officially um, in Taiwan which is quite an amazing achievement I take my hat off to Taiwan I've got to, uh, a friend of mine who comes from Taiwan and uh, and uh, so but I mean they did a really good job so we should learn from that uh, the early onset certainly we we took too long two weeks prior to the um, lockdown we could have been done things much much better in, in this country particularly around those people living in um, care homes caring for older people there's also another group now which is emerging which um, I've been thinking about some time which never gets a, a, a shout out and that's people with learning disabilities and also those in uh, supported uh, sheltered housing because there's a perfect storm coming uh, for those people as well those numbers aren't captured by the government but how many people with a uh, with learned difficulties have actually contracted COVID-19 and uh, that needs also to be brought to the fore so um, there's a lot to uh, mention also that uh, Stuart Ellis who you remember um, very kindly bought the Duckham's grease tin from me um, and I'll post a picture of it um, He's actually received it now in one piece, thank goodness, and it's going to be going into a tro new trophy ca ca cabinet he's going to be buying. And uh, Stuart, uh, I'm sure you're listening in, and uh, good luck with that. Thank you for the lovely picture, and enjoy uh, that tin. And uh, Mr Duckham's will do well with you, I'm sure. Anyway, I'll post a picture there so you can see what it looks like in its current state. I was watching an amazing programme last night about this lady, the first lady of jazz, Ella Fitzgerald. And the, uh, it was on the BBC and it was for 90 minutes. It was on, I watched it on Catch Up, it, I think it had played earlier in the week, uh, though it's only Wednesday today. Um, but um, amazing. If you're interested in Ella Fitzgerald and jazz music, you need to watch that on, on Catch Up. I've actually got loads of her albums. These are just some of my CDs. I bought... Um, the three sets, the songbooks, which um, uh, her uh, her manager Norman Grintz was the was the chap who took her to stardom really, and uh, so we've got um, the the, the um, Cole Porter songbooks, the R uh, the Irvin Berlin, and of course the George and Aisha uh, Gershwin, the Gershwin ones. Um, the one I'm playing at the moment is actually the George and I or Gershwin ones, which is really nice on my CD player. And it comes in this wonderful gatefold. Um, the actual CDs are made to look like records, which I thought was quite clever. And some lovely photographs of Ella uh, on the cases too. Um, I've got these. I think this was on a Telegraph offer, all three. Um, I wasn't, when I've played them the first time, I have to admit that some of the... Some of the um, transcription was a bit harsh on my hearing. Um, I much prefer the LPs and I've got the LPs at the song, some of the songbooks and LP and also her Christmas album as well which I really like playing at Christmas obviously at Christmas time but um, I have to say having played these as today I think they grow on you a bit and some of the transcription is quite good. The trouble with CDs is you get it over volumized and of course it's compressed music as well and so it can sound a bit odd sometimes because Ella has the most amazing voice. She really does. She's like I describe her as sort of uh, cream on coffee. Just it just so smooth, and her musicality is amazing. Her synchronization is really really good. So if you like Ella Fitzgerald, that program is definitely a one to watch. Okay. So I was going through some more tidying up today because I'm having the lounge and dining room decorated in July and I came across some documents from way back to, it was um, 2007. Uh, this is the British Legion magazine and I, as you know I used to work for the British Legion Industries which is a separate charity in Aylesford though we had the, they had the same um, philosophy and I found some really good pictures of myself here and I'll post a picture of this. This is me doing the Freedom Trail and I crossed in 2007 I crossed um, from France to Spain across the Pyrenees it was an amazing adventure it was three days of climbing each day got progressively harder and um, it was an amazing time and so much so that I got quite a bit of press out of it this is the local Downs Mail that we have in Maidstone this one came out in 2009 um, and um, in fact that's when actually I was I did the actual event um, uh, where are we yes 2009 and so um, 
it says uh, high times ahead for Richard now I'll post a, uh, a picture of this particular article here and um, so yes yeah, so it's really been good I had donations from lots and lots of people even the BBC gave me some donations because they were doing I'll just read here the BBC gave £100 after shooting location scenes in the village that was the Royal British Legion village I was uh, in charge of then for Pauline Quirk's missing uh, drama, missing the missing is, is the drama that she was in, and uh, we had some empty bungalows, and they asked, they approached me and said, could we actually um, do one of our programs? We'd like to use the the bungalow, which was empty, we hadn't got any tenants at the time, and I said yes, as long as you give me a donation towards my uh, trip to to raise money for the British Legion, and. Um, so that was what I did actually. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing time and uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. But that was back in 2007. And then in 2009, of course, I raised money and went to Kathmandu and uh, climbed Everest, which was an amazing trip. But um, what I'll do is I'll post some pictures of the, these, the event. This is the one, this is the Freedom Trial. This is done every single year to celebrate the um, efforts of the passers uh, that helped the escaping prisoners of war and those people crossing from France to Spain uh, captured up in the you know terrible events at the time a lot of them turned back and went didn't actually make it they were only dressed in the clothes that they would travel in with a suitcase others did make it uh, and we had all the special equipment for us there's a picture of me and the other guys before we set off on the first morning and um, and uh, so and a lot of them were betrayed as well. There was lots there's lots of memorials and stories that I was told on the trip, and uh, but it was an amazing time. Each time each day got progressively harder, and uh, each time they said, if you want to turn back now, you must because otherwise, when we get to day two and three or three, we'll have to helicopter out. Some of my group didn't actually get helicoptered out because they couldn't, they were so exhausted. Um, it was quite an emotional time when I got to the other side and to the border of Spain. I found it quite emotional coming down that mountain. It's a really lovely event and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. I'll share with you some of the other experiences that I had raising money uh, in some of the other papers there when I see you on Friday. So I um, had a lovely run this morning. Um, that was really nice. Uh, the weather was uh, a bit cooler, but uh, very pleasant. And also um, went to visit um, some family members today because we're now allowed to uh, socially uh, connect with people in, your, in a separate household of no more than six. And also you had to be in, a, in the garden as opposed to the house and uh, make sure you have social distancing. So I took Grecio uh, out for a run today and uh, first time I've driven any distance I suppose in my new little La Bath 595 and had a really good time and then uh, came back and did some work in the office here uh, preparing for other things the rest of the week. So I think that's about all really just to say that the record of the day today is the second Mercado uh, on Colombia. Uh, this is by um, the su this one is with Mercado uh, the Sun Who's Rays and it's at a speed 80 but it plays at 78. I'm playing this today on the Decca 73. It's by a lady called Violet Essex, she's a soprano. There is a little bit of wear on this record, so I do apologize, but of course it is getting on for 80 years old now, so it's probably not, it's not understandable that it would be that. And the second one I'm playing you is, um, is that Alone and Yet Alive, Hearts Do Not Break. And, and um, this is sung by Kerry uh, Hoen, a contralto, so a slightly lower tone than um, than uh, Violet Essex, but enjoy those two, and uh, it's the second record of that. Just to let you know that the books are still available if anybody would like those, those books about the world, um, which I've got here, let me just show you again. We've got this one, Wonders of the World, this came out in 19, I think this is dated 1930s, 1932 I think I think this one was. Um, if you'd like, anyone would like that, I'm happy to send it to you and you can make a donation just and also just to cover the postage. Um, the second one here is uh, uh, The Story of the World in Pictures, which is quite amazing. Again, this is about the same age, about 1933, and uh, obviously things have changed a bit, but some of the machinery in that in here and some of the other plates are quite, uh, in black and white, of course, are quite nice. If anyone would like to have this historical document, I'll be happy to share that with you. Otherwise, I shall give them to the charity shop when they get round to open. 
So I think that's about all really. Um, I'm going to be watching the Sewing Bee tonight on BBC at, at 9 o'clock. Always get to enjoy that programme. And uh, I'll find a different record tomorrow, or Friday, sorry, to play to you. And uh, until then, stay safe and uh, stay well. And I'll see you very soon. Bye for now. A tune a day to keep the coronavirus away on the Columbia label 3396R, the Mikado, the Sun Whose Rays, sung by Vala Essex, soprano with orchestra. Enjoy. On the Columbia label, the Mikado, Alone and Yet Alive, Hearts Do Not Break, uh, sung by Carrie uh, Harwin, Contrato with orchestra. Enjoy. <laughs> 